Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless jesus said as a sign of his coming and the end of the age there would be an increase in deception false christ who will deceive many wars and rumors of wars nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom famines pestilences earthquakes christian persecution apostasy false prophets and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor as the labor progresses the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes as we get closer to jesus return all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense all of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time John 15:18 through 20 If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. Well, while the world focuses on Israel's war against Hamas, an ongoing conflict threatens a tiny Christian nation. Armenia is facing a potential genocide at the hands of its militant neighbor, Azerbaijan. CBN's Chuck Holton reports from the disputed territory inside Armenia. Following a rapid September offensive, Azerbaijan recaptured Nagorno-Karabakh, displacing most of its 120,000 ethnic Armenian residents. Recently, the World Court mandated Azerbaijan to allow these refugees to return. But for those forced to flee, the prospect of living under Azeri rule is terrifying. I was in my father's village when the attack took place. Uh, the first explosions were in the village. All of us were shocked. We did not know what to do. The kids were at school, my brother's kids. We were trying to figure out how to bring the kids back because we had to take them somewhere safe. Unfortunately, the news cycle has uh, ignored most of what's happened of this ethnic cleansing that started on September 19th. We saw destroyed cars near us, shrapnel everywhere in front of my feet. I was struck in the hand. It was so stressful. I didn't know whether to run or to help. I didn't know what to do. There were wounded people approaching the car asking for help. They were falling, passing out because they had lost so much blood. This created a massive humanitarian crisis and generated allegations of Azeri war crimes. With the world now distracted by Israel's war with Hamas, Azerbaijan sees an opportunity to push even further. This Armenian monastery behind me is called Tatev, and it's over 1,100 years old. It's also one of the most popular tourist spots in the entire country of Armenia. And this is the area that is under threat from Azerbaijan, who now says that this is what they call Western Azerbaijan, and they're claiming that this land belongs to them. But if you look at the dozens and dozens of churches like this that are all over a thousand years old that dot this region, it's pretty easy to see that this has been Armenian territory for a long, long time. We hear they have a mind to capture our province. That's the Turks' idea. Erdogan has said so many times. Now the Russians and Azerbaijanis have joined the Turks. They want to eliminate the Armenian nation. As Hamas is to Israel, Azerbaijan and Turkey are to Armenia and the Armenian Christians. In 1915, after the genocide, we lost much of our land to the Turks. I'd like to see that land return to us someday. I just want Armenia to flourish. Armenians, though, feel ignored by the world. Please do not forget your true Christian brothers and sisters in Armenia that are being attacked and forcibly removed from them, their homelands right now. Maybe all Christian countries will come to our defense so we don't disappear from the map.
Without Russian protection, Azerbaijan's forces are poised to continue seizing territory, and people here worry about a repeat of the Armenian genocide of 1915. Matthew 5, 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so they persecute the prophets who were before you. Remember to pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters in Christ. Remember the prisoners as if chained with them, those who are mistreated, since you yourselves are in the body also. Hebrews 13.3 1 Corinthians 12.26 And if one member suffers, all the members suffer with it. Or if one member is honored, all the members rejoice with it. The Christian persecution the church is suffering right now, awful as it is, will only get worse. The Bible tells us in the last days, right before Jesus returns, the greatest political leader in the history of mankind will take the world stage. He will launch a military campaign that will result in his acquiring authority over all peoples of the earth as we read in Revelation 13, 7 and 8. It was granted to him to make war with the saints and to overcome them, and authority was given him over every tribe, tongue, and nation. All who dwell on the earth will worship him, whose names have not been written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. His empire will be the most extensive in all of history, encompassing the entire world, and his rule will be the most demonic the world has ever experienced. He will appear to be the savior of the world, but as he consolidates his power, his true nature will be revealed. He will emerge as a Satan-possessed, an empowered person who hates God and is determined to annihilate Christianity. His method of eliminating Christians will be by beheading as we read in Revelation 24. And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Jesus and for the word of God, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. For this reason, he is identified in Scripture as the Antichrist as we read in 1 John 2.18. Little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. 1 Corinthians 16.13 Watch, stand fast in the faith, be brave, be strong. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now, and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For all have sinned, and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in Him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.